Hey folks, happy Friday. Welcome into this edition of NFL Daily. I am Cam Rogers. That guy right there is Tom Downey and we're going to break down every single week five game in the NFL. Tom, week five, can you believe it? I'm expecting more chaos because I never understand what's happening in the NFL these days. I have a feeling utter we will chaos. continue to be confused, but we will try that our best. That makes it fun. That, yes. That makes it fun. Very true. Very true. We are indeed Presented by my bookie. Head on to mybookie.ag and you will experience the number one online sports book. I guarantee it. 100% deposit bonus on that initial deposit using promo code chat. Tom, yes, I am talking about free money. I like free money. You so, do like so free money. I put down 300, I get a free 300. That is correct. That's Up a heck to of a thousand deal right bucks. There. So that's a heck of a deal, right? No there. such thing as a yeah. free lunch, except in my bookie's but case. Dinner time. No such thing as a free dinner. Fine. Okay, I will, uh, it is 6 o'clock on the east. I will go along with that. So many thanks to mybookie.ag for being along for the ride. And you can also go on to chatsports.com slash bet if that is easier for you. As we head into the news and notes section here on NFL Daily, we will start off with a little quarterback news. Marcus Mariota is a game time decision versus the Miami Dolphins. He's got a hamstring. Like this totally swings the outcome of this game, I think. I I think if Marcus plays the Titans win, if he doesn't, Matt Castle ain't getting the job done. Even against Miami. So it's totally dependent on what happens with Marcus Mariota. So he Maybe they should have had a better maybe they should have a better backup QB. If only there was a starting NFL quarterback. There has to be somebody out there, right? Nah, there's no Maybe way. he's been to a Super Bowl before, yeah. was a play away from winning yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Are we being sarcastic right now? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and with that, we bring in the weigh-in. Should the Titans have signed Colin Kaepernick, Tom? They signed Brandon Whedon. Ugh. And the Titans threw out this garbage excuse of, well, you know, Brandon Whedon's run a similar offense. He's, you know, he fits the style a little bit. I, I, like, come on. You signed Kaepernick, and they should have signed him before they started because we've seen Matt Castle play. We've seen Brandon Whedon play, and we've seen Kaepernick play. One of those three is actually decent, and it's Kaepernick. So, yeah, they should have signed Colin Kaepernick right there. Tom, they didn't even talk to the guy. Which, like, like not only that, like, people say that Kaepernick can't throw the ball. Well, there's his stats that actually that, that he kind of can't throw the ball, especially compared to Castle and Whedon. He'd be a good fit in the Titans' offense. Right. Because he's not all that dissimilar play style-wise from Marcus Mariota because both of them can move on the ground and run. And, and, and look at the most recent game with the Titans. Mariota had two scores on the ground. Kaepernick would have been a great fit. He, he's a, he is a superior quarterback to Brandon Whedon. Oh, heck yeah. I, I, mean, Brandon I, Whedon, encourage, I encourage someone in the comments to tell me, ex- explain why Brandon Whedon's a better signing than Colin Kaepernick. Someone, the Titans have said, well, he kind of knew the system. It doesn't take that long to pick up the basic core of an offense, especially when you're going to be the backup and you're going to have a smaller playbook no matter what. I would argue it'd probably be easier for Kaepernick to learn the system than Brandon Whedon. Kaepernick, by the way, is a very intelligent quarterback. He had a very high Wonderlick score. Mm. Like, I, I got, there was a Twitter guy who told me that Kaepernick wasn't a very smart uh, NFL player. And I pointed to the Wonderlick score. I'm like, hmm, wonder why you assumed he wasn't smart. Mike Drop, right yeah, there. He did, he did not reply to me on Twitter. So we will see if Mariota can actually play in this game. It's looking rough, Tom, but hey, we'll My see. guess is no. Yeah. My guess is no. Yeah, they'll probably test it uh, pregame and see what happens from there. So let's move on to the next news and note here. Washington Redskins star corner Josh Norman out for weeks due to rib and lung injuries. Now the Redskins are on a bye this week. That is the good news for Washington. There you go. Then they play the 49ers, which I think they can survive without him, although it does make life easier for Pierre Garçon. Then they go visit the Eagles, and then that fourth week, the Cowboys. So Uh-oh. Des Bryant Des coming Bryant, at you. Des, Des Bryant, no Josh Norman. We'll, we'll see what happens there. So, That's a much better matchup for Des if Norman can't go. Look for Quentin Dunbar and Kendall Fuller to get some more work. I'm mm, sure they're getting not, a lot more first team not, reps. Not <laughs> great, damn. They're four at least has some upside. Quentin Dunbar used to be a receiver. So, not exactly striking fear into wide receivers. So there you go, Josh Norman, star corner there for Washington, out at least a month, it appears. Let's move on to the next note here. Derek Carr officially questionable this week against the Baltimore Ravens, Tom. That's different than what we were hearing beforehand where it was going to be two to six weeks. Oakland fans, I'm saying there's a chance. Now, he shouldn't play. He has a fractured back. This is not the time to rush back and, you know, risk worsening that injury and thus ending the Oakland season. But there is a chance he actually plays. With that said, just play manual, take the week off, see how he feels next week. Because if he takes one shot, 
to the back, he could aggravate this injury, and then he's out for the year, and then Oakland's season is pretty much over. I'm thinking this is one of two things here, Tom. Either it's mind games with the Baltimore Ravens, or there is a fire under the Raiders' butt right now because they're 2-2, two and two, and they're seeing Denver winning, they're seeing the Chiefs winning, and they feel like they got to get this guy back. <laughs> and they've seen E.J. Manuel play. <laughs> and they've seen E.J. Manuel play football, so... It's one of those two things. I'm not really sure what it is, but there you go. Derek Carr, officially questionable, not doubtful, not out this week against the Baltimore Ravens. And here you go, Nick Folk, still Tampa Bay's kicker despite tryouts going on around him. Do you know what it's time for? You love this headline. Complete the circle, as producer Brett Scott mentioned before in our pre-show meeting. Bring back Roberto Aguayo. Oh, Complete boy. the circle. Honestly, he can't be any worse. That's true. Like, I mean, he cannot be any worse. He can be as worse Folk, or as bad. I Folk say. has been worse than, than Aguayo was last year. So bring him back. He's a fridge right now. The Bears had him in for a tryout. Bring back Aguayo. Ugh. They Nick wouldn't. Folk was awful. They wouldn't. Do oh, it. Oh, man. Nick Do Folk. it, Bucks. Nick Folk's Do confidence it. is really rough right now. That's, Complete uh, the circle. Aguayo comes back, and he drills a game-winning throw goal in his first game. The Twitter <laughs> meltdown alone is worth it. The Twitter meltdown. All right. There you have it. Speaking of Nick Folk, Let's go into the highlights. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Patriots. And this one at Raymond James Stadium. First drive of the game. And Tom Brady fires over the middle behind his receiver. Picked off by the rookie Justin Evans. Great start for the Buccaneers here. To the second quarter we go. 3-0 Patriots. Winston rolling to his right and hits Deshaun Jackson here. And you'll see Jackson do a nice little toe job by the white paint. Nice job. Bucks on the move later that same drive. He's back, Tom. The Mighty Mouse. I know he hates that nickname, but it's Doug Martin squirting the through. Hamster. And does he get into the end zone? Well, we think so. Let's take another look here. Doug Martin just short of the uh, goal line there. So what do you do, Tom? Football's all about deception. Can we sneak it? Little reverse psychology. Uh, you do it again with Doug Martin. He gets in for the score. Bucks go up 7-3 to three at that point. Patriots would respond. Second and goal, Brady with a quick hitch to his guy, uh, Chris Hogan. He's in for the score. Patriots up 10-7. Fast forward to the third now. Pats up 16-7. And Brady, no shot, Tom. <laughs> if they had run no the shot. ball, they would have picked up like eight yards on that play. There was, there was some big spaces. The tackles, revolving doors. Tom, we never show field goal highlights, but this was rough. A 31-yard <laughs> chipper. This was such a bad kick. Nick Folk missed it. My gracious. Bucks grind it back, though. 19-14 in the fourth with a chance to win it at the end. And Winston, with a pretty good pocket, will fire downfield and, well, nobody home. So kind of Interesting there play go. call there. Yeah. The, the, the four verts get it out quickly. It almost worked. I don't think O.J. Howard was really prepared for that football. I, I was not happy with the Bucks' play calling in this game. Doug Martin had 74 yards on 13 carries. They threw it 46 times. Too much. You should have fed Doug more. Like I know it's his first game back, but he was highly effective. This was the type of game that Doug Martin could have gone off and, you know, kind of grounded out a, a win for the Bucks. Yeah, yards per carry was right there for Doug Martin. Looked really good in, you know, 13 carries. So the Patriots improved to 3-2. and two. Air quotes on improve because it was kind of a lackluster performance. Eh, it looked that great. Buc Buccaneers now at 2-2 two and two as we ask the audience, are the Patriots overrated? I, Big one. I think they are. Like, this is not a good defense right now. And I know that they only they, they held the Bucks to 14 points, but I think that was partially the, the Bucks play calling, and they missed multiple field goals. Like, the, the Patriots probably should have lost that game if Nick Folk wasn't awful. Oh, absolutely. So, I, I, do think that, I do think they're a little bit overrated. I still think this is a good Patriots team. I think they'll be a playoff threat. But right now, I'm not impressed by what I've seen from this Patriots team. Not at all. So it's almost reminiscent of the 2011 Patriots where that secondary was just awful, but yet they still squeaked by the Ravens thanks to Cundiff. They went on to the Super Bowl. So, you know, anything can happen. Yeah. Anything can happen. It is still early in the NFL season, but certainly weigh in. We'll be tracking your comments. Of course, we are completely live here on NFL Daily, so we'll throw up those comments throughout the broadcast yes. if they are good ones. So make them good ones. And uh, there you go for the New England Patriots and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Thursday night Football. All right. Are you ready for some head scratcher plays? I am. I love them. Hint, hint. In this week's version, folks, Nick Folk will be on there. <laughs> oh, boy. He, he might end the show. I'm not really sure how, where, where we're going to fit him in, but he's going to be on there. He's going to be a lifelong person in bra, I have a feeling. It is the bra segment, the head scratcher plays of the week. We're looking back on week four in the NFL. Here we go. We got 
some good ones here. This is, you know this had to be on here. Because we're still going to keep calling out Danny Trevathan Suspended. for a cheap shot. Suspended for two games, as he deserved to be. Appealing. Well, <laughs> I, I, as he will. Like, come on, he led with the crown. He intentionally targeted him. He knew what he was doing. He was trying to take out from some frustration. There's no need for that. Like, that is the textbook definition of, of, of a cheap shot. That's fair. So for shame. Fair. For shame, Danny Trevathan. Uh, look, we had to have one Mike Glenn play. Yeah. It is time for Mitchell Trubisky. Like, this is just comically bad. Such a waste of physical ability, Mike. Come on. <laughs> you're tall, you're big arms, make it happen. <laughs> God. Even when the Jets win games, it's still bad moments. Bilal Pal doinks off him, Miles oh, Jack gross. picks up. I was torn between if this was a boom or a, bl- a bra play, but I thought this was kind of more bra because it was a, a little swing pass. The Jets couldn't even execute that. They almost blew this game. Jarek McKinnon, you're trying to do the read option. He just loses the ball. Like, I don't think it even touched Dalvin Cook. Like, this was the Wildcat look. I think he just dropped it. This like, is why you don't get too cute in the NFL. That's what they were doing. Stop it. Brutal, brutal play there. Jason Witten here. Bryce Butler, Des Bryant celebrating. Witten comes over and, what are you doing, Jason? <laughs> Let him uh, celebrate. Oh, uh, Jason. And, and Des and Bryce continue once Jason leaves. Like, the grizzled he's, veteran. He's such a dad. Like, oh, hey, guys, wait, wait till it's confirmed. Th- then you guys can celebrate. Oh, Lord. Come on, guys. That's just it looks worse because they lost. Antonio Brown, by the way, oh, do was really angry in this game because he didn't get the ball. He's upset about this play in particular. That's a touchdown if Big Ben oh sees my. him. But he got oh mad. My. He threw the Gatorade cooler. And then the coach tried to talk to him, and he was still angry. Antonio Brown was not happy today. Even though the Steelers won, he was not happy. Like, like stop whining, you diva. Why does he <laughs> are such divas, Tom? <laughs> Antonio just, Brown, OBJ, all these guys. He just wants the ball. That's all he wants. By the way. I love angry Philip Rivers. He was not mad. Uh, not oh, happy. he was mad. He, dr- he, he dropped the mouthpiece again. He's all angry. He's yelling at the coach. Takes off his glove. Takes off his glove. Then he starts yelling into his helmet. Like, I think he was trying to talk to the coordinator up upstairs, so he was yelling at him. Like, he was all kinds of mad. Jay Culler, bottom, bottom of your screen. Wow. He just don't care. Smoking Jay Cuddy, don't give a damn, folks. Just sitting there, not even paying attention, making it very clear. Get this guy a lighter. <laughs> he just doesn't care. He's chilling. He's, he's, yeah, he's fine. Watch Matt Ryan. Down he goes. Oh, Matty, Matty. <laughs> Matt Ryan. This is an elite NFL athlete, folks. Instead of Matty Ice, it's Matty Lava on that play, okay? <laughs> the floor is lava. Matt Ryan just trips over his own two feet. <laughs> That's great. Marquette King, this was all kinds of bad. The fake punt trying to make something happen. Uh, he got nothing and just mm, Marquette King. No, 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 no dancing there, Marquette. Oh, Watch wait. it. You, you saw it get at the end. I saw there? that. You saw what was that? We'll show it to you again here. Marquette King, the fake punt, disaster play there. Got nothing. Okay, that's fair. He was angry about the play. Oh, you So baby. he threw the ball. He got flagged for it. Oh. He threw the ball at the Broncos player. You can't do that, Marquette. Oh, Marquette. Come on, man. Uh-oh. All right. What do we got here? Uh, so this is a Blake Bortles jersey that the Jets fans lit on fire. <laughs> that's just cruel. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, can you imagine like Bortles' like, ego right first now? First off, someone's got, a, someone's got an Antonio Cromartie jersey on. I think there's a Bills fan right there at the very front. I think it's a Bills fan doing Speaking there. Speaking of Bills oh, fans, there they Bills are. Mafia, guys, step back up this week. There's, <laughs> there's the table breaking here. Two different angles on this one here. They were very much fired up. Uh, look, I, I love your table breaking here, even when you guys do it on purpose. But sometimes, Cam, when they break the table, they don't always mean to break the table. So these Uh-oh. two fans are dancing. And then the one starts jumping. That was mistake number one. And down they go. <laughs> Gravity and Bills fans sometimes don't mix well. Oh, down they go there. That is your bruh moments of the week. And there you go. And, Tom, is it weird that I feel pain just by looking at some of those plays in some of those moments? Is it bad that, that I find them all humorous? <laughs> Does that make me Not a bad person? Oh, no. I'm not judging you over here, am I? A little bit. I am. Okay. I am. I'm okay. judging you a little bit. I, I don't really blame you. Are you ready to preview some games Let's here? do it. I'm excited for more chaos and weird upsets that no one sees coming, and then we all look stupid for our picks. <laughs> Can't <laughs> wait. Love the confidence. How about a clunker to start off? The New York football Jets going on over to Cleveland to take on the Browns. Jets coming off a win against the Jaguars. The Browns are dead last in our power rankings right now. Tom, your thoughts on this one? It's a pick em. It's it is our a pick first em. pick 'em game of the year this year, so there's no spread. It's just, hey, pick who you think is going to win. That's not all that common. Now, remember, plus three for, for, for being at home, for the most part, on, sure. on spread. So if this were a neutral site, the Jets would be favored by three. I'll be honest here, Cam. I got Cleveland. Cleveland gets off the Schneid this week. Okay. This is the game they win. 
this is the game the Jets lose and they go back to kind of tanking like we all thought they were going to and then they suddenly won two games and it's all kind of weird and maybe it's actually hurting them in the end because they, you know, should be losing games. Right, <laughs> So right. they get a quarterback. Well, that was the diagnosis going into the season about the Jets. And, yeah, I agree with you. I think the Browns get it done in this game. How about that front seven? Only giving up three yards per carry so far this year. It's a good no front Matt seven, Forte. and now they get Miles Garrett back. Yes, exactly. Yes, Miles Garrett this making that debut. defense isn't terrible. No, no. Mm -hmm. So I think the Cleveland Browns certainly have a shot at home to win this game. And throughout all these games, of course, we want you guys to weigh in. Who you got? Give us a heart for the Jets, a wow face for the Browns. It's basically a straight-up game because it's a pick em. So throw in your thoughts, and we'll be tracking throughout the show here. I am going to join with you and take the Browns in this game. All right, we're doomed. Get it done. We we're are doomed. doomed. <laughs> we are doomed. Josh McCown will look like Joe Montana. That's going to happen just because. Uh, I see some split votes here on the heart and, and, and the wow faces. By the way, that, wa that wasn't a typo on the uh, television. Uh, actually, this game will be on Fox, so some cross-flexing here oh, okay. where Fox will yeah, actually have an AFC normally, game. Normally a CBS game. Correct. I Correct. guess Fox, Fox lost the war there. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Well, this game is on Fox, too, and I'm sorry about that for Fox. The 49ers taking on the Colts, this one in Indianapolis. Brian Hoyer, Jacoby Brissett, what a game. <laughs> yeah, um, look, well, there's a reason we started with these two games. Uh, both, or all four of these teams are, they're just not very good, is the way I would describe it. And I think that's being nice enough. The Niners have been close, though. They've been very close to pulling off some upsets. The Colts have been close as well. I think a 1.5 stretch is pretty fair. This, this is pretty close to a pick em for me. Mm -hmm. Normally, I, I lean toward the home game in this matchup. I'm going Niners. Yeah, you like the Niners. I, I, in this I, I one. think the Niners, they've been very close to pulling the upset. They've, they've, they've been pretty good against the spread this year. I'll take the Niners in one and a half points. Well, you said it. 49ers' last three losses have been by a total of eight points, so they've been competitive. This could be one of those games where it's not exactly fun for the first three and a half quarters, but in the fourth quarter, it actually ends up being a really good game because so, it's close. So the Colts are indeed favored yeah. in this game. And look, I was. Pretty inspired with which the way the Colts played in that first half against Seattle on Sunday Night Football. They collapsed in that second half, but still, I think Jacoby Percet at least is a nice short-term answer. Yeah, and he's I, way I, better I, than and, Tulsi. And, and, and he's going to be a solid backup in the okay. NFL. Okay, yeah. I agree. Yeah, so give us a heart for the Niners, a wow face for the Colts. I've put my vote in for another wow face. So two for two on the wows. So, or sorry, sorry, hard on this one. Yeah, hard your on heart one. in this one. Very I'm different. wowing this one. Okay. So give me the Colts. Uh, that game at 1 o'clock on Fox as we move along here to the big ketchup bottle. The Steelers will host the Jacksonville Jaguars <laughs> this week. <laughs> yeah, you get it? You <laughs> yeah, like I that? get it. That's Thank clever. You, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I can't take the credit, though. I took it from Chris Berman. But I digress. The Steelers are favored by seven damn, and a half damn. in this, this one. This is the internet. You just pretend it's all yours. <laughs> well, I feel like I'd get called out if I owned it myself. <laughs> so there you go. I'm an honest person, folks. How about the Steelers, though? Um... I think this is, this is a home game for Pittsburgh that sets up very well for them. Home games for the Steelers, they are a much, much better football team. I think they're going to play well this week. The 7-F spread is, is a little high for me, but I'm going Pittsburgh on this one, and I think that they find a way to pull out the, the win here. How about Ben Roethlisberger so far this year? Has not been the same Ben as he was last year. How about this stat coming from James Palmer of NFL Network? Roethlisberger is 4 for 20 with zero touchdowns, and a pick with a 34.2 passer rating. That on passes of 20 plus yards this season in 2016. 14 touchdowns, Tom, and a passer rating over 113. A different Big Ben right now. He and it's because he's been on the road earlier this year. Mm -hmm. He struggles in road games. He's just not a good road quarterback. This is a home game, so I think we see a better game from Big Ben. I'll take Pittsburgh minus seven and a half. I, you know, I don't feel super confident with it, but that's the route I, I, I will go here. So the Jaguars give us a heart if you think they will perhaps outright win this game or finish inside seven and a half. I'm going to go with the Steelers and give my wow face as well, Tom. I okay. do like them to win this game at home. I think they win it by 10, 13 points or so. Uh, look, you know, there seems to be some sort of rift going on with Antonio Brown and Ben Roethlisberger. He was frustrated because he wasn't getting the ball. Right. But That's ben, what it came down to. Ben then called him out on Pittsburgh radio, saying he wasn't setting a good example, what have you, and all that Ben jazz. likes to do that. And, okay. and the, the dirty little secret about Big Ben is that he actually loves drama. <laughs> he loves the drama. He, he did it this offseason with the whole 
I might retire. I don't know. We'll see when I decide to retire. Maybe it's this offseason, and then he played, and he's going to keep doing that. I think Ben likes the drama. Okay. Which is right. fine. Like, if that's what he wants, okay. But it gets kind of annoying. <laughs> Gives us, like, material to chat about. No just, doubt about just, that. Just play. <laughs> just, just play the game. So the Jaguars taking on the Steelers in Pittsburgh. There you go. With that one, as we chug right along here in our weekend slate, but first, we do have a reaction poll, actually. Yes, we do. Going back to Ben Roethlisberger there, I want to wrap up this thought here. Mm -hmm. Is Ben Roethlisberger on the decline? So, folks, weigh in with your thoughts. Give us a heart for no. Wow face for a little bit. Laughing face for only on the road. It's the road Angry games. Face for straight it, it's, up. it's the road games. I'm not overly concerned about Big Ben right now. Now, if we get to week eight and he's the, the home road splits haven't evened out or he's still just not good at home, then I'll be concerned. But I'm not too worried about Big Ben at the present moment. So I'm giving it a haha -ha face only on the road. It is certainly worth noting he was looking over the thought of retiring yeah. during the offseason. So Which, I, th I think he's going to keep more doing drama. That. Tom? He's going to keep doing that and he's going to keep playing. Okay. <laughs> it, it's going to be a, a lesser version of Big Ben or excuse me of, of Brett Favre. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hey speaking of that draft class with Ben Roethlisberger you know, Eli Manning, of course, battling the Los Angeles Chargers this weekend. The Giants and the Chargers at MetLife Stadium. Both teams a combined 0 for 8. Uh, another clunker here, this one on CBS. Uh, I mean, do you think the Giants finally get a win here? 0 and 4 games. Um, Gotta love it. Oh God, I think the Giants find a way to win. Uh, the Chargers are very bad in close games, and that's been the case for years now. So I think this ends up being a close game, and the Chargers find a way to lose. Because that's simply what, what they do. That's what they do. It's their MO. Which, which isn't fair, and it stinks for, the, for their fans, whatever ones they have left since they left <laughs> right. San Diego, and no one's showing up to the L.A. Chargers game because why would you at this point? You're so in L.A. I got the Giants in this one. No Paul Perkins in this one for the Giants. I don't think it'll matter. He's they, averaging they, less than two yards per they carry. They can't run the ball anyway. Right. So it's like, oh, no, we got to play more Shane Vereen, more Orleans Darkwell. It's going to be the same end result. Very surprising. Doesn't change anything. <laughs> about the Giants, by the way, Tom. 25th in total defense. Defense. Right well, it's because the offense hasn't, hasn't been on the field. Right. Like, the, the offense has not moved the ball well. It's hurt the defense. Getting fatigued. And maybe, sure. they, maybe they miss a little bit of Jonathan Hankins. So the Giants favored by three at home. That's your average, as you yeah. mentioned earlier in the program, Tom. I'm going to take the Giants. I like them in this game. Mm -hmm. I think they get it done. I think they're more physical, at least, than the Chargers are. And I think that this, will be the This uh, strikes me factor. as one of the games where it ends up being like a two-point a, a two spread and we get screwed. Yeah, and, we, and, we, and we end up with it wrong. Very possible. Indeed, that's, very possible. That's what happens. So Giants and Chargers, somebody's going to get a win by default, unless they yeah. tie, which would be very fitting. So... There you go. God, if that game ties, oh my goodness. <laughs> that would be that'd insane. Be so, that would just sum up both these teams' seasons so, so well. Let's get to Please America's do game of the week on Fox. Troy Aikman, Joe Buck, and all of the crew. Packers at Cowboys, 425 on Fox. Tom, you are excited for this one, I assume? Uh, I'm not feeling great about this one for, for the Cowboys. Uh, Sean Lee has not practiced this week. I'd be surprised if he plays. That's not a good sign for the Cowboys. Their defense is, frankly, it's, it's a 10-point worse defense when he's not on the field. Tyron Smith, the left tackle, his back acted up on him on Wednesday. Uh -oh. He didn't practice Thursday, didn't practice Friday. Maybe he can give it a go tomorrow, but if he can't go, the Cowboys' offensive line has not been very good this year. You replace Tyron Smith with Byron Bell, Ugh. you're asking for Dak Prescott to get killed. Oh, my. So Tyron. even though Ty Montgomery's probably not going to play, the Packers are banged up as well. I got the Packers in this one. I, I think this is a Green Bay game. You know, the Packers have really owned the Cowboys in recent play. Uh, you see it right there. Packers have won six of the past seven versus Dallas, most notably that playoff game, of course, last year. So that this is a two-and-a-half point spread in favor of Dallas kind of worries me. That's it, actually pretty amazing. It, it's one of those head-scratching spreads. I know, I know it's a home game, but I know that Vegas loves the Cowboys, but with the worries around Sean Lee and, and Tyron Smith, uh, this should be closer to a pick if not Packers favored. I'm going to give my wow face here. I'm going to stick with the Cowboys. I think they win this game. I think they find a way. I think they game plan well, en well enough to defend Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Look, I don't think the Packers are going to be able to run the football either. Not going to be a lot of deception on that Packers offense. They if Aaron won't. Aaron Rodgers is throwing the football along. Cowboys pass defense has not been that good either. That's true. Also bad pass defenses, the Packers. That pass defense Makings has been a bad. We'll see. So we want you to weigh in. Of course, we mentioned the Packers defense. 
Probably can't cover Des Bryant. Is this the breakout game for him, Tom? Oh, I think it's, this this screams Des Bryant massive game. I'm thinking like seven catches, 120 yards in a TD. Like he should go off in this game because there is no one on the Packers roster that can cover him man to man. Who are you gonna throw out there? Demarius Randall, who's been a bust. He Quinn, got benched. Quinn Rolland is a is a nickel corner right now and has had some issues. Kevin King is a rookie who I wasn't that high on coming out of Washington. You can throw out Devon House. Like, oh, like, like are you gonna put Morgan Burnett on, who's a safety playing some nickel corner right now? Like, this should be a Des Bryant monster game. It's clear the Packers are trying to move pieces around in the secondary to make things work, and it's just not working right now. The, the safeties are okay, though, at least. So, Des, so Des, Bryant, that. Des Bryant, by the way, is probably getting sick and tired of playing elite corners right now. I'm sure he is. You know? I'm sure he is. And he gets all the attention because T. Whale isn't really all that productive, and Cole Beasley has not been that great, but I think this is a big game for Des Bryant. All right, there Even you have it. Even though the Cowboys, I think, lose. Big game, of course, two big-time franchises, the Packers and the Cowboys, 425 on Fox. Moving on here to a surprising team battling a surprisingly bad team, I guess you should say. The Bills at the Bengals. The Bills, the number seventh team in our power rankings, Tom. Bengals coming off a win against Cleveland. I thought, I thought the Bills were undervalued in our power rankings based only on what they've done this year. They've beaten the Broncos and the Falcons, the latter of which was on the road. Those are two mighty impressive wing, wins. With that said, this is very curious. That This is my curious line of the, of the week, Cam. You're the scratching Bengals, your chin right now. The Bengals at home, I'm scratching my recently trimmed beard. There you go. The Bengals are favored by three. Yep. I know it's a home game. This is the three and one Bills fresh off a Falcons win. Let down? Uh, maybe. It, it's just it, I'm surprised that they're favored. Like, or the, 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 that since he's favored. So I'm picking the Bengals. Every now and then the, there's a surprise for that goes, wait a minute. That doesn't sound right. All right. I trust you, Vegas. Give me the Bengals minus three. Yeah, I'm smelling the thing, same thing you're smelling right now. I mean, look, I know the Bengals don't have Eifert. They don't have Ross, but they find a way in this game. At some point, you're just, you're just going to see the Bills crash back to earth, Bills, right? I will defend you guys later on in the show today, Bills Mafia, but I think this is a Bengals win. I don't know if the Bills are actually this good. Yeah, I mean, the data is there to somewhat support that with the wins against Denver and Atlanta, like you mentioned, but still, it's the resume early. is good, but it's not what, I've, not what I expected to see. Need to see a little more from Buffalo. Yeah. I'll take the Bengals yeah. at home. I think they get after Tyrod Taylor and company there. So give me the points with the Bengals there. Moving on here to low-key, a good game here. Seattle taking on the Rams. The Rams have beaten the Seahawks at home each of the last three seasons. Yeah, this look. This Seattle is much worse on the road than they are at home. We saw that against the Colts. We've seen it for years now. They just struggle on the road. The offensive line has issues. Playing at home makes makes life much easier on them. With that said, I don't actually know how good this Rams team is. I think this is this might be another bit of a flash in the pan team. Maybe teams will start to get a little bit better again about against stopping Jared Goff. Maybe now that they have some actual film that's not just complete trash. They'll know how to actually, you know, game plan against them a little bit. And if you take away Todd Gurley, I think you can stop the Rams because Gurley's been unbelievable this year, both in the out of the backfield in the passing game and on the ground. I think at some point he's going to get shut down. I think the Seattle defense starts to get going a little bit. They've been a little bit slow this year. Yeah. So I will take Seattle, even okay. though they're, they're the underdogs. Yeah. I don't feel super confident about that, but I will take Seattle. Who would have thought the Rams would be minus one against the Seahawks in a regular season <laughs> even, game this even, year? Even though it's at home, I did not anticipate this Absolutely happening. crazy. Hey, that hats game. off to you, Sean McVay. You've done a fantastic job. Yes, he has turned around that team so far. 4 or 5 p.m. Eastern time on CBS. How about Seattle's defense, though? Look, we know it's... It's, it's had issues. Yeah, it's not it, the it, biggest it's punch, had issues. but... It's, you know, like it, it, sh it should be better than this. Yes. And that's what that's what's concerning to me. You're taking the Seahawks. I'm going to hang on with the Rams. I okay. think they find a way. I'm believing in Sean McVay. This is a big-time statement game for them. I think they're going to be fired up to take on the Seahawks. Could also home. be a, a bit of a letdown game. Much, Certainly much like true. Buffalo after beating the Cowboys. Now, were, now they go at home against Seattle. Right. When you when you beat the Cowboys, you're riding high. It's going to be a good game, though. I think, I think this is going to be one of the better games this week. So, by the way, I'm sure a lot of the audience here yes. are disagreeing with our picks. Yes. And, Tom, a lot of the audience disagree with our power rankings, too. I disagree with our power rankings. Of because course you do. Because we do the AP style voting. Mine, I was the outlier for, like, all the picks this week. I was the outlier. So, we took it upon our sal ourselves to create a fan voting system yes. where you go on chatsports.com slash rank and the fans vote for their yes. own power rankings. So this is you guys. So if you guys didn't vote, no complaining in the comments no. section, although I'm sure you, 
you guys will. Yeah. So let's get to Which it. Which is fine. It is what it is. Here are the fan-led NFL power rankings. And look, the bottom four look pretty similar to ours. There's the Browns at 32, Niners at 31, Giants at 30, Miami Dolphins at 29. Nothing too alarming. I, I have no issues with this. I the Dolphins just a little bit higher, but they also lost to the Jets. So yeah, rightfully in the bottom four. And got pounded by the Saints. So I don't have an issue with that either. That's fine with me. How about the next four here? The Chargers at 28, Colts at 27, Bears at 26, Bengals at 25 here. You know, kind of along with our rankings I, too. I mean, I there were I this was the same bottom eight I had, and okay. I I think you know the bottom and you know the number one team was very easy to determine. It was everything else with the with the bunch of two and twos and the handful of sure. three and ones that got everything all screwy. So let's go to 24 through 21 here. The Jets, Ravens, Cardinals, Saints. Some of these teams still kind of vying for playoff spots. I was a little bit higher on the Saints, but I know some other teams like the Texans were, were higher both on the overall power rankings and the fan-led power rankings. So, so far, so good for me. Like This is not where I start to have major disagreements. It'll come. Oh, just wait. All right, let's go. Here we go. 20 through 17. Titans at 20. Jags at 19. Vikings at 18. Seattle at 17. Wow. I thought, I thought they were just a little bit low on Minnesota, namely because we've, there are a couple teams we haven't gotten to yet. I, I don't have Minnesota that, that high. Or I, I, I had them higher. I had Seattle a little bit higher. So this is where we start to get to the, hey, you know, it's okay. Like, I, I'm okay with this. We're getting a little a little far out Controversial. there. Controversial. Okay. Uh, just All a right. little bit. Slowly but surely. So let's move on to 16 through 13 here. Redskins at 16. Then you got the Raiders at 15. Buccaneers at 14. Cowboys at 13, Tom. I thought they were a little low on the Redskins. Because Washington, I you, agree. You, you, you look back what they've done this year. and, you, and I, I base it on, okay, what have you done? What? Who have you beaten? Who have you lost to? Their losses are to the Chiefs and the Eagles. They've beaten the Rams and the, and the Raiders. Yet the Redskins are behind the Raiders. I didn't really understand that part. Yeah, that, that one's questionable. Yeah, they're also behind the Rams. So I, 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 I just didn't get it there. That's what confused me. And the Buccaneers there at 14, of course. We didn't incorporate last night's performance, so they'll probably go down. They'll drop to the fans. just a little bit. But yeah, yeah so th this again is pre-Thursday night football. So let's move on here. 12 through 9. Panthers at 12. Patriots right on with our rankings at number 11. Bills wow, we at agreed 10. on something. How about Can that? Can you believe it? How about that? Texans at number 9. First off, y'all way too high on the Texans. Like 10 spots it's too high. Inside the top 10. Wow. Like, I think the Texans are going to come back down to earth. I, look, I know that they had a very impressive win most recently, and maybe there's some recency bias there. I can live with them being the top ranked AFC South team right now. This is a 2-2 two two team. Ahead of multiple three and one teams right now, and their wins are over the Titans and the Bengals, they lost to the Jags and the Patriots. So how do you have the Texans ahead of the Patriots? Like that's what I don't understand. Like you beat the, it was a head-to-head -head matchup, and the Texans lost. By the way, how are the Panthers below the Patriots? Also yes. Also, how are the Bills ten? Look, I, I get that. I I agree with you guys that the Bills are going to fall back down to earth a little bit here. But you base it on only what they've done this. You got to give some respect. This is a three and one Bills team who lost to the Panthers, which is kind of where things kind of got screwy. They beat the Broncos and the Falcons, one of which was on the road by a 10-point win over Denver, a 6-point win over the Falcons on the road, Yep. and they are ranked behind both of those teams. So Bill's Mafia, I got your back for at least this week. Maybe we fall back on earth a little bit, but I got your back here. Y'all got disrespected this week. Short-term respect from Tom it's Downey sad. for Bill's Mafia. Short-term. Sad. That's the, that's the key phrase right there. All right, next four here in the fan-led NFL power rankings. We got the Steelers, we got the Eagles, we got the Rams, the Lions at number five. Wow. Okay, so the, okay, it was, look, into the top ten, it's really complicated. Like, it, it is a mess right now because of there's the, well, this team beat this team, but they lost to this team, so it's all complicated. Steelers I had at six. I didn't have eight. Okay, that's fine. They, they lost to the Bears, but they are three and one. I was actually pretty high on the Eagles this year. Based on the power rankings, I was very much alone on this. I had them all the way up at two. So, Philly Whoa, fans, baby. you're welcome. Again, I'm basing it on what's happened this year. They've beaten the Redskins, Giants, Chargers. Their only loss was to, an, to the only undefeated team. I think, they, I think that they should be a little bit higher. The Rams, who lost to the Redskins, are below them. The Lions, I'm actually okay with them being at five. I, I had them at eight, a little, bit high, a little bit lower. But this, I think, is a good Detroit team. Okay. All right, there you go. Now, it, producer Brett's the only. Oh, the the Giants and Charters are, are are you know are, are haven't won a game yet. Hey, 
You play who you play. Three and one is three and one. You only lost to the Chiefs by in, in a one-score game. So Steelers, Eagles, Rams, Lions there, eight through five. Finally, the top four. Green Bay at number four, Denver at three, Falcons at two, and the Kansas City Chiefs at number one, Tom. I, well, first off, number one, I think we all agree with. Right. All right, the Chiefs are number one. That we can all get behind. They're undefeated. If you're doing a power power rankings in which Chiefs aren't number one, I think you lose your right to vote. At yeah, that you point. do. Like, yeah, you do. So, so, and I come back to this, Bills Mafia, I, I, I got your back this week. How you beat the number two and number three teams, how are you ranked so low? That's what I don't get. Yep. I mean, we had them at seven. Fans have them at ten. I will give the fans credit for having Falcons ahead of the Packers because the Packers lost the head-to-head matchup. All right. Let's bring in Justin, who has a comment. Wow. BS. The Lions are number two. The Lions cannot be number two because they lost to Atlanta. Therefore, the highest Detroit can be is number three. Logic from this Tom is Downey power right rankings, there. folks. We gotta have some kind of logic here, based only on what's happened. These are not playoff projections. All right. And no vote, Justin. If you voted, great. You can type vote. Come back next week. Chatsports.com slash rank. We'll do it all again. Absolutely. Let's bring in a reaction poll here. Grade the fans' power rankings. Give us a heart for you liked them a lot. Wow face for good. <laughs> I really good. want to see how the how the, how the Laughing face for average. Angry face for awful. Why do I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of angry faces, Tom? Oh, because this is, that's the nature of power rankings. Yes. No matter what, someone's upset. It's all about upset. disagreement. As we saw in the comments. Look, if your team wasn't number two this week, you're... You're kind of angry. Here come the angry faces. I, 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 I you laughing. I, don't, I haven't seen a single heart, and I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm not, I'm not giving you guys a heart this week. Um, I'll give them a C, mostly because I just think, look, there has to be some kind of logic here with power, power r- rankings, and I think the Bills got supremely disrespected. These, these should be based on what we know thus far, what has happened through the first four weeks of the NFL season. Yeah. They should be higher. They should be a lot higher. No, it depends on... A lot of angry faces, by the way. I can't. Shocker <laughs> alert. Depends on your philosophy with power rankings, of course. Some people like to project forward. It's not power rankings. Some people like to just look at what the <laughs> data has from this past season. I'm looking at the data. Yeah, you're looking at the data. Okay, all right. I hear that. So there you go. Throw in those reactions. A lot of angry faces. Yeah. As we remind you, we are indeed presented by MyBookie.ag, the number one online sports book. Head on to that website, MyBookie.ag, or chatsports.com slash bet. And submit those NFL picks, those college football picks. We've got a big slate tomorrow across CFB. Use that promo code chat for that 100% initial deposit bonus. It's a great deal. You can bet on so much. With, bet on so much. With my bookie. You can, you, can, you can bet on who the next Pope is. So you come to me. I have, love America. You ask for picking advice. I give you the advice, essentially the answer key to the test. You go on mybookie.ag. And you lose all your money. <laughs> you win all the money. Put down $1,000, you get $1,000 back. It's a beautiful thing. It is. So there you go. MyBookie.ag. We thank them for coming along here on this Friday edition of NFL Daily. Let's get into some more picks here. We got the Panthers at the Lions. A sneaky, really good one. Yeah, I think this is going to be a good matchup. The Panthers, they look much better against New England. Cam Newton looked like the Cam Newton of old. He was chucking it around. He looked confident in the pocket. Some great throws. The Lions, the offense hasn't been that great. The defense has been pretty good. I think this this is a good Detroit team, though. And in, in, in years past, I've been ripped by Detroit fans for not believing in them. I think their playoff results have, have proven me right. But this year, I feel a little bit better about Detroit. And if they win this game, puts them at 4-1 and one at that point. They're, they're in a really good spot for a playoff spot. Yep, this is so, a big early game here. So Detroit, I got you guys again. Favorite by two, I think you win by at least three. Yeah, give me the Lions in this one. I think they I'm find a way. I'm still not sure how good this Panthers team is. I'm not. Uh, yeah, the jury's still out on and the I, Panthers. And I think that's kind of true about, about Detroit, but I trust Detroit more right now than I do Carolina. I think Detroit is better with ball control. I think they take care of the football better than the Panthers. Cam Newton in this whole saga here off the field, it's this, a factor. This strikes me as a low-scoring game. Yes. It strikes yes. me as a low-scoring game. Maybe a little bit more higher scoring than we saw of Vikings-Lions, but low-scoring affair. Yeah, I like the Lions in this one. We'll see what Plus, they can do Plus, I'll be training for Amir Abdullah. I just traded for him in my fantasy league. Why the heck would you get Amir Abdullah? Because Amir Abdullah's good, dude. What's wrong with you? Amir Abdullah's a good Lions player. Lions running back. Oh, He's a good him. player. God. Give us a wild face for the Lions. A I'm heart even, I'm even more on the Lions bandwagon now that you just ripped Amir oh, Abdullah. Jeez, I'm still taking the Lions, play. though. So, oh, Amir, get it done, buddy. I'm sure you can. Maybe. We'll see. I don't, I don't like the match this week for him, though. I might, <laughs> I might sit him. <laughs> All right. I got Detroit. So, fun one in that one. That one, of course, in Detroit as we check in here with the Cardinals and the Eagles. This one at Lincoln Financial Field and the Eagles. How about this spread? Six and a half. They're favored. I don't think Arizona's that good. I am all aboard the Eagles in this matchup. I think Arizona, with their injury-ridden offensive line, 
no David Johnson. They're just beat up right now at a lot of key spots. They're not going to be able to protect Carson Palmer, who's already a statue. I think the Eagles front seven has a nice game. They cover up for what's not a great secondary. I think the Eagles win this one. I think this. I think they cover the six and a half spread as well. Wow. This, and I, th I think this is a good Eagles team. They might still be a, a year away, but this, this is an Eagles team that's going to be in the playoff discussion all year long. So this is where we're going to starkly disagree, Tom. I think the Cardinals actually win this game outright. I think they oh. actually put it together. I like the look at the rankings now. I mean, I know it's not the be all end all, 11th in total offense, 7th in total defense, but eventually they have to put it together. The Cardinals are very good at defending tight ends. I think they clamped on clamped down on Zach Ertz in this one. And look, the Eagles can't run the football really either. So fair. it's fair. I, I give him a shot. I give I give him a shot. I'm giving my heart for okay. the Cardinals. Okay. Well, so. I, I have the Eagles here, so should we have a side bet of some kind? We should. What do you want to do? I don't know. Uh, we're, we've been doing on a, on a Tuesday's NFL Daily. The, the loser of the Fantasy Weekly Draft has to eat some disgusting hot sauce. I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's no longer, like, you know, edible. I, I think it's gone bad. We can do something different, though. Let's brainstorm it. We'll and, brainstorm uh, it. We'll come we, back we to the come audience. Back later in the show. Actually, we want the audience to weigh in. And if you guys have, have ideas, get in the comments section. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We do want you to weigh in about this, too. Can the Eagles make a deep playoff push, Tom? My one concern about them, when it gets to the cold weather, can they run the football? You know? So. I've always thought the cold weather thing was just a little bit overblown. Okay. Because so many teams have domes these days. True. And I guess in Philadelphia, it is outdoors, so it makes a little bit more sense. I, got the, I, I don't know if this is a team that's ready to make a deep playoff push. I think this is a team that reminds me of where the Oakland Raiders were two years ago, where the Bucks and Titans were last year. A team on the precipice, they'll compete for a playoff spot, they get a bad break near the end of the year, they come like, like a game, a game and a half short, and then next year, it's a dangerous team. It's time, yeah. All right, so Eagles and Cardinals could be a fun one. We'll see as we... Check in with the Ravens at the Raiders. Flacco, EJ Manuel, made for the bright lights on CBS. How about this one, Tom? Uh, Joe Flacco's a terrible NFL quarterback. Oh, come on. Uh, with that said, Oakland, I don't think, is going to have Derek Carr. There's been a little bit of buzz ab about Carr this week that there is a chance he plays. I don't believe it. Sounds like a terrible idea. A surefire way to get your season ended short. Uh, so, and I can't believe I'm doing this, I will take the Ravens on the road. How about it? Because I can't bet on EJ Manuel. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm sorry, Oakland fans. I like you guys. I can't put my money on EJ Manuel. There's just no way. Look, it's obvious the Oakland Raiders are going to have to run the football effectively, especially if Derek Carr doesn't play. I think the Ravens find a way to win this one. It's a gross score, 19 to 10, something like that. And look, that sounds pretty right. Yeah, Joe Flacco needs to find his stride at some point. Maybe it happens this week against the Ravens. He just doesn't have a stride. <laughs> well, come on, Super Bowl MVP? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Give me the Ravens a blind in squirrel. this one. Can you believe the Raiders are actually favored by two and a half? Maybe I, it should be closer to one this, or a pickup. This, this, can, this is one of those that might be off the board for me. Okay. Because of this, the so uncertainty you're not around Derek Carr. Yeah. You're not touching it. And I've been pretty good about calling the ones that are off the board because I always get them wrong, <laughs> which, is also, which is also not good. I'm throwing out a big-time heart for my Baltimore Ravens. Get it done on the West Coast, Baltimore. We'll see what happens. How about the Titans at the Dolphins here? Speaking of quarterback injuries, looks like... Off the book. I am not betting on this one. Looks like because Mr. Matt Castle. This, this is a wholly dependent on whether Marcus Mariota plays. If he plays, the Titans win and they cover their spread. If he does not play, uh, I'm picking Miami. As bad as their offense Smoke has been. Smoking Jay? Smoking Jay Cuddy. <laughs> I will take the Dolphins in this one as well. I don't think Mariota plays. And Matt away. Castle, are you kidding me? Come He's on. so bad. The Titans are favored right now. Like this, Which is weird. Like I think this needs to be off Vegas the board. Vegas needs to catch up. I, I think they just need to pull it off the board because of the uncertainty around Mariota. It is, it is, a, it is like a six, seven-point swing at least for me as to whether Mariota plays. Yeah. I think if he plays, the Titans should be favored by six. If not, it's Miami by like one or two. Sure. So, yep. with that in mind, I don't think Marcus plays. I will take the Dolphins, and I feel disgusting saying it. I'll throw out my wow face as well. Give me the Dolphins. Don't feel great about it either. Look, Jay Cutler and the Dolphins threw up an egg against the Saints in London. Mm. So, there you go. We'll bring in that weigh-in that we had earlier. Should the Titans have signed Colin Kaepernick? It's a legit question right now because it doesn't look like Mariota's going to play. There and are Brandon a Wheaton, lot of teams that should have signed Colin Kaepernick in the offseason. Because then the, oh, he doesn't know the offense excuse no, is no longer valid because he would have picked it up by now. 
And when their quarterback goes down, they would have felt a lot better. Like, if you were the Titans and you signed Kaepernick, wouldn't you be feeling more confident than about to go play Matt Castle? Absolutely. Who's awful? Yeah. And we've seen the awful for years now. We know what we're going to get out of Matt Castle. There's no doubt about that. At least Colin Kaepernick brings some electricity. And I think to he's an actually offense. a pretty good fit within the Titans' offense. Yeah. They, they run plenty of shotgun. They, they like to use Marcus Mariota as a runner. Kaepernick can run. Matt Castle's a statue. Yep. Brandon Whedon is on the backup. He's just garbage. Like, it is not good if, if Matt Castle goes down too. I mean, uh, I mean, maybe it's a can't get any worse scenario, but like Tennessee has suddenly become the, the bastion of cast off Cowboys quarterbacks who themselves were cast off somewhere else. <laughs> Where's clipboard Jesus? Bring back Charlie Whitehurst. He's Come on. also terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so weigh in on those uh, comments and uh, we'll, we'll be showing them throughout the broadcast here. Time for some Sunday night football. The Chiefs taking on the Texans at NRG Stadium. Will the Chiefs go 4-1? No, they beat the Texans. I don't. game. I do not buy Houston. I'm not doing it. You're not ready. I do not buy Houston, all right? I know that Deshaun Watson's looked good the past two weeks. It is about to get significantly harder for Deshaun Watson. He's going to come back in a month, two months, and look back at his game and go, dang, the NFL was actually kind of easy my first couple games because the, the, def- the opposing defense of the coordinators, they now have tape. They have the tape to, okay, okay, this is what Deshaun does well. This is what he does bad. Here's how we exploit him. Here's how we make him struggle. He is going to be in for a little bit of, of a rougher patch. He's still going to be able to run. He's going to make some plays. I'm a little bit worried about his accuracy going forward. It's been better this year than, than, than it was at Clemson. Mm-hmm. But the NFL is about to get much harder for Deshaun Watson. Think about what happened with Carson Wentz last year. First three games, first four games was fantastic. After that, it was about a one-to-one TD to, to interception ratio. It was even lower than that kind of for the middle part of the year. It got harder. It is now up to the Houston offensive staff, Bill O'Brien and so on, to make life easier on Deshaun Watson because it's going to be harder from the defensive perspective. The Cowboys and Dak Prescott did that fantastically last year. The Eagles and Carson Wentz did not. So it, will, will Watson get the benefit of having the, the Cowboys-type game planning, of making it easy on Prescott? Or will it be, hey, we're going to have Carson Wentz scenario, go out and carry, carry the team? You know, a lot of times in the NFL, a season is comprised of different seasons, right? Where mm-hmm. teams have ebbs and flows, peaks and valleys. Yes, they do. You know, I guess the Texans are on a peak right now. We'll see if they hit a so, valley. I got the Chiefs. This is a big one. This is a big one. Texans, Chiefs, could it be an AFC Championship preview? I mean, it could, technically speaking. Sunday Night Football, but Tom? No, it's not. I, w- I, I would be, this could be a playoff matchup. Okay. But I would be really surprised if this was an AFC championship preview. Like a wild card game on NBC, like 3.30? Yeah, like the Chiefs kind of come back down to earth a little bit, and yeah. they, end, they end up with like a wild card spot, and Houston ends up winning the AFC South, and it ends up being bad again. I don't know if Houston's going to make the playoffs. I still think the Titans are the team to beat, if Mariota comes back soon and healthy. I'll say this. I'll be controversial. I'll say maybe. I'll say maybe, Tom. Look at the way the Patriots are playing right now. Look at the way the Bills are playing right now. The NFL is unpredictable. Who the heck knows? I could see the Texans and the Chiefs battling in the AFC Championship game if indeed, like, just the cards fall as they do. Who knows? That's the equivalent of saying there's a 1% chance, so I'm putting down maybe. Jim Carrey, you're saying there's a chance. All right? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right? There you go. Uh, Chiefs and Texans on Sunday Night Football. By the way, I will be taking the Chiefs as well, along with Tom. (laughs) After all that, (laughs) let's go to the Bears at the Vikings. We have Mitchell Trubisky time in Minnesota this week. Thank God. It's about time. Mike Glennon is just not good. Like, I think that was pretty obvious early on. This is an interesting game for me because this is the first of Trubisky defenses we'll see I think that there could be a bit of a surprise, you know, the new quarterback. We've seen this at times in the past, too. The new quarterback comes in, and he has, like, a, a good first couple games. Then defenses figure him out, and it kind sure. of regresses. But I think Trubisky will be okay. But this is a good Vikings team. And that it's only a two-point spread gives me extra pause, but I got Minnesota. There is a slight chance Sam Bradford actually plays in this game. Be a big boost. It would be a huge boost. I don't for them. like his camp. I don't think it'll happen though. I think they give him at least one more week off before Sam Bradford returns. I don't think it's gonna matter in this game. Honestly, I'll take the Vikings, even though the uh, the Bears get that two point. I cushion. think they'll look a little bit better. Yeah. If only because they won't have the supreme ter- terribleness of Mike Glennon at quarterback. So that game on Monday Night Football, Vikings and Bears, as we. 
Welcome in MyBookie.ag. We thank them for being along here on NFL Daily on this Friday evening. Head on to MyBookie.ag, the number one online sports book. Use our promo code chat and get up to $1,000 on that initial deposit bonus. It's a really good deal. Heck that's, a deal. A, that's free money to bet. Free money. Can't beat if you're that. you're just out of college like me, that is fantastic. Yeah. All about money. My boy Jason is uh, is, is back in the comments here. So uh, Jason. Hopefully he's using my, my bookie. He said he's been doing really well. Okay, so, Jason. I see you. Sign up with my, my bookie, Jason. Send us the screenshots of your picks, and we'll see how, how you do. Okay. There you go. Mybookie.ag. Use promo code CHAT. Let's bring in a way in here. What do you expect out of Mitchell Trubisky in that Monday Night Football game? I think it'll be fine. I, 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 don't th I think he's going to be better than Mike Lennon, and that's a huge step forward. I think they're going to make life very easy on Trubisky in this game. I think you're going to see a lot of runs, a lot of short passes, and, and that's his game style. Like You go back and watch how he did for the, 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 the UNC Tar Heels. He never took a bunch of shots downfield. It was all kind of inside of 20 yards, and he's very accurate in that range. What does concern me is the Bears' receiving core is not good. Like it's just not it's just not a good unit. So that that that's going to give me some pause. But I think he'll be accurate with his passes. He's going to make good decisions. He's not going to turn the ball over. He's going to be a consistent quarterback for you. Okay. Doesn't have the ceiling of like a Mahomes or even a Kaiser, but he's not going to make a ton of mistakes. I think he's going to be a really good upper echelon game manager. Well, you know, I'm wondering here, John Fox perhaps just throwing things against the wall and seeing if they stick just to save his job right now. And I guess I you know, we'll see if Mitchell Trubisky he is can stick. Very much on the hot seat. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Let's recap the fan-led NFL power rankings. Remember, you can go on to chatsports.com slash rank, and you can throw in your own edition of your power rankings. Let's take a look at 32 through 29. Browns, 49ers, Giants, 29, or Giants at 30, 29. You got the Dolphins. Not too many disagreements there. You got Chargers at 28, Colts at 27, Bears at 26, Bengals at number 25. Again, nothing too crazy. I'm fine so far. Yep, you're this fine. Is, Tom's this, okay. This is at least a B. Tom is fine. If not an A. That is good. Jets at 24, Ravens at 23, Cardinals at 22, Saints at 21. Again, you know, typical stuff, what we've been seeing throughout most power rankings in the media world. Let's go to 20 through 17 now. Now we're getting a little iffy. So we got the Titans at 20, Jags at 19, Vikings at 18, Seahawks seem pretty low at 17. That's the one that's blaring to me. I, I thought Minnesota was a little low, too. But look, it's Seattle and Minnesota are both 2-2, two and two, so it's not outlandish to have them here. By the way, we got Jason with oh, Jason positivity wait, no, wait from Jason. Jason. Atrocious. Jason. Jason, you got that in like five power rankings in. Are you just assuming they're going to be atrocious? Or you can make it off from when we looped through it earlier. Also, did you vote, Jason? Chatsports.com slash rank. If you vote... You can complain. If not, you lost your right. Yeah. So vote next week, and then you can complain. Because so I, I know you're always watching, Jason, so you got to make sure to vote, too. All right. So let's Jason, go to... Jason is a reliable <laughs> watcher, and I appreciate it. 16 through 13 here. Yeah, I have a big problem with the Washington at number 16. There you go. Ra Raiders at 15. Buccaneers at 14. Cowboys at 13. So Redskins were a, a little low for me, especially since they beat the Oakland Raiders head-to-head. -head. Yeah. Like... These are power ranks. Head-to-head -head win matters. Another, another rough one here. So you got the Panthers at 12, Patriots at 11. The Panthers just beat the Patriots. So I don't even know about that. They also beat the Bills, but that was where it got really confusing in the power, yes. power rankings because, like, the Bills beat really good teams. I don't know how the hell the Bills are 10. They should be so much higher on these rankings. Texans at number 9. Get out of here. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Tom I had him is at 19. shaking his head The right Texans now. are – I don't think they're that good. I, I hope I'm wrong. I would prefer to be wrong. I don't like, you know, cheering against NFL teams. I hope I'm wrong on that. But at nine, nah. There's All right. No way. Eight through five here. Steelers, Eagles at seven. Rams at six. Lions at five. You don't like the Rams there at six. Yeah, the Rams lost to the Redskins. How are the Redskins so low and the Rams so high? That's a 10 I, position difference. I, I think there was some recency bias this week yeah. with our votes, which, which like, I can get. Happen. I understand. But. All right. The final four here Packers at four, Broncos at three. Falcons at two, Chiefs at one, nothing too crazy here, right? Uh, well, I think the Bills and Eagles are wildly undervalued. I can't believe I'm saying this. I actually agree with Jason in the comments. Whoa. Jason said Eagles should be four, Bills should be five. I had them both top five as well. Yeah. I think you got to pay your respects Jason and for I now. actually agree. This is a first time here on NFL Daily. Book it. Remember this moment, ladies and gentlemen. Jason and Tom are agreeing. So there you go. The power rankings, the first time we had a fan-led power rankings session. We'll do it again next week. Yes. So, of course, watch the games this weekend and then throw in your rankings, chatsports.com slash rank. 
One last thank you to mybookie.ag, the internet's number one sports bookie. Tom Downey, ready for a big weekend? Uh, I'm hoping to bounce back after a pretty rough week last week. And I, I do the spreads. Pitch, the straight up picks have been very, very good. I'm, okay. I'm significantly above 500. The spread picks are killing me. I've lost like seven games by like a combined eight points. I am saying it, my prayers rough. this weekend. Hopefully things work out. We'll see. Thanks so much for tuning in to NFL Daily. Stick around here on the Chat Sports Facebook account. We've got so much programming coming your way on Saturday and Sunday. For Tom Downey, I'm Cam Rogers. And if you missed anything, we're going to loop it all again here. The Patriots Bucks highlights will be coming up very shortly as well. By the way, podcast version, yes. version of the show. Look it up, NFL Daily, iTunes, and Android. So there you go. Yeah. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.